on the latest developments. Sarah Jane, all we know is that uh, on Sunday, um, the submersible went below the surface of the sea. It was descending four kilometres down to see where the Titanic is. Titanic is uh, 1,500 miles off the east coast of the United States, 350 miles south of St John's in Newfoundland, uh, at a depth of four kilometres. I mean, this is quite significant. Uh, we're, we're talking about uh, really extreme depths here. As you can see, around about 14,000 uh, feet. Um, the submersible itself is a Titan submersible. It's quite basic, really. Uh, you can see its diving capability is nominally 4,000 metres, and Titanic herself is at 3,800 metres. So you're actually on the limits here. Uh, and what has happened, uh, the, the actual uh, safety pulse that comes out as a sonar signal from the submersible uh, failed, uh, or, or fa was failed to be received in the support ship. And so from that point onwards, uh, there was obviously an emergency taking place. Either there's been a power failure or indeed there's been something more catastrophic. And we haven't heard anything from the submersible since then. Uh, and the basic problem is it's tiny. It's, it's 20 feet long. It weighs 10 tonnes, um, but it's made of glass reinforced plastic. So even if you're looking at it with a sonar, it's not actually reflecting any uh, sonar pulses back to you. Um, there's a lot of debris on the seabed. Uh, Titanic itself, of course, is part of the problem. So you're looking for a needle in a haystack here, even if you actually had any vessels in the vicinity that could actually look for it. Because the only thing that can really look for it is another submersible, and they don't have one at the moment. Yeah, they are few and far between, because on the one hand, this is an incredible piece of kit in terms of there are not uh, many bits of equipment that can go that far beneath the surface of the ocean. But then on the other side of it, it's actually a bit of rudimentary kit you were talking about you know what it's made of um and you know much has been made of the fact that it's controlled by an old games um, hand controller i mean your your mind's yeah. a little bit blown by that no, what look are at the it, limitations Sarah, basically you're looking like at a glass reinforced plastic hull it's been presumably tested uh, down to the sort of depth that it's designed to go to but that composite material is actually quite fragile you get any breach uh, the thing's going to implode. But this is pretty basic. Just look at the external hull. There are no mechanical arms or grabbers or anything like that. This looks like a Colombian narco sub. Um, these are the sort of things you find off Colombia that have basically they've had their bits of kit procured from the internet and all sorts of other places. Uh, and it's incredibly basic. So if it gets itself entangled or underneath an obstruction, it hasn't got these be. mechanical arms to get itself out. Mm -hmm. And you've got this single port at the front, which gives you very limited visibility out to about probably 10 feet, and a sonar that will give you another indication out to about 20 feet. So if you're down there in this very, very obscure, dark and cold environment, you're on the extremes here, there's no question. If you go inside the hull, uh, we've seen some videos of what's going on inside, that's a laptop. <laughs> it's not a computer screen that's mounted in an integrated system and it's actually steered by a games console. Yeah. So whilst you can actually praise the inventor for saying, look, this is fantastic innovation of applying modern technology, this is Mickey Mouse. Uh, and, you know, you and I have got to ask ourselves, would, would we go in something like this, which looks so basic to go down to... Four kilometres? Well, one of our correspondents was actually looking at the company um, that's um, in charge of this submersible, their website, and it was talking about licensing and, you know, regulations for this kind of submersible. And I think one of the quotes of the website was, you know, licensing can't keep up with innovation, which, you know, would set alarm bells ringing, particularly knowing what we are now uh, witnessing. And um, what do you... What stage do you think the search is at? We heard from the US Coast Guard earlier that they're widening the search. And I don't mean that in terms of, you know, width. I'm talking yeah. depth. What can we read into that? So, Jane, uh, I mean, I think they're just giving us news, quite frankly. Mm. The best they can do at the moment is look on the surface with aircraft and with ships to see if the thing's actually bobbed up to the surface. It's released its weight, used its compressed air to come to the surface. I think that's a bit of a forlorn hope myself. They would have found it by now. In the, and that's a huge search area that you can yeah. see there. It's probably out to about 20 miles. The fact of life is they can't actually start looking until they've got some uh, platforms that can actually look under the surface. They don't have them. And you're going to have to look with active sonar, pinging away, looking for this thing. But bear in mind what I said, it's glass reinforced plastic. It's not metal. So the, the echo is coming back and it'll be very difficult. You've got Titanic there with all the debris from Titanic and it's sitting on the bottom and frankly, looking for a needle in a haystack is, is child's play compared to this on the latest developments.
Sarah Jane, all we know is that uh, on Sunday, um, the submersible went below the surface of the sea. It was descending four kilometres down to see where the Titanic is. Titanic is uh, 1,500.